Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on bone health and health span. If you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis or osteopenia, and you're looking for those little things that can make a big difference in your daily plan around osteoporosis and bone health, well, stick around because there is one tiny little fruit that might just make a big difference. Stay tuned. All right, so did you know that prunes are considered a powerhouse when it comes to fruit? Now, I like fruit and I tell my patients to eat a fair amount of fruit depending on their carbohydrate tolerance, but prunes in particular are known for their digestive benefits. Some people use them as an adjunct to weight loss. Some people love them for antioxidant properties, cardiovascular health, but what about bone health? I got a question the other day about prunes for bone health and I looked up and found that there was actually a good study and so it got me thinking, you know, why would a prune be helpful for bone health other than potentially just for gut health? Well, it turns out that gut health is certainly a part of it, but also they are high in potassium, which we know plays an impact on bone health. They have vitamin K1, which has to be converted to K2, but still can be helpful for bone health. The fiber could have an impact on your microbiome and it can have an impact on calcium absorption. They're also high in polyphenols. Polyphenols are both antioxidants, they're anti-inflammatory, and we know inflammation plays a role in bone health as well. And lastly, they can't even contain phytoestrogens. So kind of like soy, where you're leaning on the estrogen receptors a little bit to potentially slow down osteoclast function and reduce bone loss. So it's possible then that prunes which are dried plums of a specific variety, can actually improve bone health. But what does the literature show? All right, so what my research found is that there is actually a randomized controlled trial. And the reason why this came up recently is because this was just published in 2022. So this is relatively new. Now this is just a single study, but it was relatively well done. So there were three groups. There was a control group that got no prunes. There was a group that got 50 grams of prunes and a group that got 100 grams of prunes. Um, now, you might be wondering how many prunes that is. Well, it depends on how big they are, but it's about five to six prunes, which I'm not a prune eater, but my understanding is that's quite a bit of prune. So I had a question with this of if it's the 100 gram group and you're talking 10 to 12 prunes, how tolerable is that? Well, it turns out the compliance, meaning people sticking with this for the 12 months of the study, was actually much lower in the 100 gram group. So I think that that was probably too much for a fair number of people. The actual dropout rate was 40%. But otherwise, it was about 90% in both the control group and in the 50 gram prune group. So it seemed to be relatively tolerable. Now, they looked at bone mineral density at 12 months, which you could argue it's not really gonna change that much in 12 months for most people, but in the control group, it did go down by about 1.1%. So that's what we expect to see is about 0.5 to 1% in most people year after year. So it went down by 1.1%. Um, in the uh, intervention group, the 50 gram prune group, which is what these statistics came from, it went down by 0.3%. So it still went down marginally, maybe not really within the margin of error, but it still went down a little bit. They measured FRAX based off of all the other uh, data that you can collect for FRAX, and FRAX got worse in the control group and didn't get worse in the intervention group. So really you could argue that prunes as the single intervention helped this one group from uh, losing bone over the course of these 12 months. So what does that mean for bone health journey in my patients? Do we recommend prunes? Yeah, I think that they can be reasonable. I have some concerns about the carbohydrate content, but they're so high in fiber that it really balances the sugar pretty well, as long as you can tolerate that carbohydrates. Again, about five to six prunes per day seems to be about the sweet spot to have an impact on the bone health. Um, and I really think that they can be an adjunct for uh, osteoporosis, for a comprehensive picture that includes a lot of things. Should it be your only thing? Probably not, but again, a good bone health approach is just layering win after win after win after win. You just stack all these things up and eventually you're going to have a comprehensive plan that works for you. Thanks for making it to the end of this prune video. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so that we can send you a notification when new videos are released. If you know anybody that would benefit, please send this to them so that they can continue on their own bone health journey. 
If you want to learn how we manage bone health and some other tips and tricks you can do on your own, look for the free masterclass link in the description below. And lastly, I want to hear from you. I love comments on YouTube. We have such great back and forth that I would love for you to leave a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what topics you want us to talk about. We have a growing list of great topics on bone health, and I'd love to hear what you want to hear. Thanks again for making it to the end of this video. We'll see you next time.